Prospecting for gold over the last eight years has taught me the value of embracing the grind and never giving up. I find myself continuously improving my skill sets every single week. And with my new ventures into hunting for precious gemstones and crystals, this has never been more important. Which leads us neatly up to today, where I'd spent over 40 hours over the past couple of weeks honing my skills on how to find one thing in particular, and that was amethyst. I knew I was in the right location because I was pulling out huge amounts of smoky quartz. They are all smoky quartz, quartz, and possibly even amethyst crystals. Smoky quartz aside, amethyst is what I was hunting and this day would leave a mark on my soul as one of the best days I've had hunting for this gemstone. I got bitten by a redback spider only a week ago and it put me in bed for about three days. On top of that, I had a mild sensitivity to march fly bites. And the amount of march flies up here is nothing short of miraculous. So, we're going excessive with the bug spray. This is the pocket with all the smoky quartz. It went from here all the way back to here. It pinches out that way, it pinches out this way, and I can't find anything over here. But man, was it sexy while it lasted. This hole right here is where the two pieces of amethyst came out. And again, this is all tailings. People have worked this already. And most of the crystals seem to be sitting quite shallow. And we found them both on the bedrock. So I'm going to keep digging in this for a couple of hours. Spiderbrain Chris forgot to mention that he was digging in an abandoned amethyst mine. The primary production there was amethyst, but smoky quartz was also incredibly common as well. Most of what I was digging in, save for the pocket that I discovered, is tailings. Whew. We're going to see heaps of broken pieces of crystal because again, this is tailings. We've got a piece of broken quartz crystal just here. That's a nice clear one just there actually. That looks like a piece of smoky to me. Ah, so easy. <laughs> Even in the tailings it's easy. Quartz, smoky. What we're really looking for is that little hint of purple. We're going to get lots of pieces of quartz crystal today or broken bits. They'll go in the rock tumbler and look pretty pretty nice by the end of it, so we collect them. Some of these you get heaps, some of these you don't get very much. I mean, it's already been picked over, so you have to be lucky to get something really good. We found a couple of good bits yesterday, but nothing, not no quantity, you know. But you just, you just don't know. Those two pieces that Mick pulled out were absolutely stunning. That's right, just the day previous, Mick had pulled out two beautiful pieces of amethyst from the same hole. And so I was treating this much the same as I would if I was gold prospecting. If you're getting good stuff in the tailings, it's probably in a layer. So my goal was to chase that layer and see if they discarded any more. Oh, that's a big chunk. Not complete, but I'll take it. Um... I might have got one. I might have got one. Oh, please, gotta pick it up. Sometimes they look the right color in the sieve and you pick them up and you look at them in the light and they're just not quite right. They're, they're smoky quartz. Right there. That looks like one. That looks like a spire. Oh, it's clear. It's clear. Oh, come on, please. please, please, please. I can't see the light. It is. That is purple as. Oh, I got one. That's a good one! Oh! <laughs> that looks like the Hogwarts castle. I've put in maybe more than 40 hours up here looking for this, looking for this. Amethyst, I love this crystal. It used to be considered amongst the, the rarer gemstones, but large deposits of it have been found around the world and that's sort of devalued it a little bit. But Australian amethyst is still quite rare. I'm, oh my god, I'm so happy. Mwah. Oh, baby. That is an amazing crystal. I think the chances of picking two pieces out like that from the same sieve would be pretty small considering that this is the waste rock. But I mean, damn, you never know, right? Oh, oh, is that one? Is that one? Or is that a broken smoky? Nah, that's a smoky. Damn. I got, I got the fever now. I got that crystal fever. That's wicked. 
Um, these could go in the bucket. That's going in my pocket. Not my pocket, the, um, the bag pocket where it's definitely going to be safe. Don't forget to hydrate after excitement. I know a lot of people are like, you should bring water up for the crystals, but it's Australia, guys. Bring water for you, not inanimate objects you can wash at home. The old tailings were providing me with a little bit of crystal. Great stuff for the rock tumbler, but nothing quality other than that piece of amethyst. Found part of a little bed. Obviously nothing too impressive, but it'll be interesting to see what that cleans up like. The quality compared to the smoky quartz pit really isn't there. However, all the little shards that I'm getting, some of them are super clear, super clear smoky quartz, quartz, quartz crystals, and they're gonna make great rock tumbler material. Pulling out the usual broken shards, and you know, some of them are okay, some of them are looking pretty good actually. But then I pulled this one out and I thought it was a broken piece. It's not. That is a complete crystal. That is terminated at this end, right there, both sides completely unfractured. And then on the other end, completely unfractured and terminated on that end. That is a double terminated crystal, but I've never seen one form quite like that before. Looks like some sort of Star Wars flying fighter machine thingamabob. For your unusual shape, you have earned a trip in the bag. Get in the bag. When I was working the smoky hole, I was using a very tight classifying mesh because there were heaps of small crystals in that. In the waste rock, there really aren't that many. I tried about two dozen of these yesterday and I got maybe three or four little crystals. So that's why I'm using such an open mesh here. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, 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 shake your money, your money maker. Well, it's not really a money, it's a, it's a crystal maker. Same thing, really. There's not really that much in this one. There's like a little shard there. That was a bit of a dud. This is probably rather stressful for some rock hounds to watch because I'm digging with a steel pick into something that could easily contain a valuable crystal. However, this is the tailings and it's unlikely I was going to find too much more of anything of value. And for what it's worth, I'd already got my duct tape wrapped stick in my backpack for when I went to a virgin area. That was coming up, but for now, I was just hammering my way through the waste rock to see if I could find some more. I gotta look around carefully, because after what I just found, Indiana Jones is gonna come screaming out of the bush with a bunch of natives chasing him. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that thing is massive, it's semi-transparent. Oh, it'd be cool to see that cleaned up at home. That's, that's a big one. That's probably the biggest one I've ever found. Get in my belly. A massive hornet hanging around. Which is just what I need. I haven't been stung by one of them yet. Just over here holding a carton of sugar too. Stay over there. You gotta pay close attention to all the dirt clumps that are in your classifier. Because if you don't break them up, you miss crystals. That's a nice one. That's cool. Look at that. Oh, that's crystal clear. That is super clear. Ha! <laughs> well, there you go. That's why you pay attention. That's a real nice one. Look at that. That's like glass. There is no inclusions in that. At all. Oh! Unbelievable. I just pulled all those mammoth chunks of quartz crystal out. I've lived in this part of the world for pretty well my whole life. I've had a few moves and I've known about the resources that are here in the Northeast. They're significant. We have sapphires, garnets, rubies, corundrum, amethyst, smoky quartz, citrine, the list goes on. And I've been focusing on the gold so much that I kind of neglected all of this cool stuff to the point where I feel like I'm a little bit behind on where I should be with my knowledge on this stuff. And what really got me into this was the Harkama, I can't pronounce this name, Harkama Diamonds, the mining that they do over in, um, I think it's Kansas or somewhere in America. And I've been watching those guys pull out some amazing pieces and I was like, yeah, I know that there's stuff like that around here. 
and I've invested in finding it. One of the greatest decisions I've ever made. I've been very carefully picking my way through this classifier and we're getting a lot of quartz. Now what I've noticed in the past when Mick's got it, when I've found the amethyst, it seems to come out where the quartz crystals are. And I've just spotted this dark crystal down here. It could be a smoky, absolutely could be a smoky. But it looks like it might be a piece of amethyst. I have to hold that up to the light. Oh, it's dark. It's real dark. Oh, it is. Oh, that is purple as it comes. <laughs> Even my colorblind ass can see that. That's gorgeous. That's what we're here for. You can see why this was counted amongst the most valuable gems up until those really large deposits were found. This thing is stunning. That is crystal clear. It's hard to show you properly but there's no inclusions it's all it's all dirt on the surface that is that is unreal oh my god oh i got two two in one day this is some um seriously lazy prospecting i'm sitting in my hole i wish i bought my little shovel <laughs> damn i'm so freaking stoked about that i can't believe that i got two that's unbelievable. It's the problem of being colorblind and going gem fossicking. You can't see shit. I just saw something tumble into my classifier. You can see the straight edge here. Ooh. Oh! Oh! Whoa! That is a big smoky point. Wow! In two hours, I've collected a whole bunch of material, everything from some great specimen pieces, some super crystal clear crystals, some amethyst, but most of it's going to end up in a rock tumbler that's going to go towards my gemstone pay dirt. Something I've wanted to do since finding the smoky quartz deposit is open up a brand new hole in a virgin area. This may or may not pay out. I'm still learning how to hunt crystals. In fact, I've got a little bit of a hunch and a tip from one of my subscribers that using a Geiger counter could help, and I have one of those on order. And that's because smoky quartz crystals like I found in this hole here are radioactive, or at least they were. That right there is what I'm looking for. You can see the literal crystal structures on the host quartz rock here. That's what I'm after, right? Because what that's showing me is that this particular vein is forming crystals. Someone else smashed out a whole pile of this quartz a long time ago. I mean, we've got trees growing in this thing just from this line here. And there is evidence that there is crystals in it. We've got the vugs there, including a pocket that still has smokies in it. See them? Yeah. Look at that. Unreal. I've noticed something. All of the really big pieces of bedrock around here have been pushed back at a certain point. And then it's all the fine dirt, right? That fine dirt is sitting on top of the bedrock. We dug down to that this morning in the waste rock pile over there. I was pulling the best amethyst off the layer where the bedrock would have been dumped after it's been searched. That means they've dug down to the bedrock through the float and they're just taking the top of the bedrock off, just the top. That seems to be where all the big crystals are. So instead of tramping over there and digging a hole fresh, I've come to my smoky quartz hole, and this is that layer I'm talking about. The bedrock starts about here, and the rest of this is that float overburden layer. The pocket of smoky quartz I was working with was incredibly rich, but since I started moving the dirt at this level, I started seeing little crystal points come out, smokies. So I'm gonna follow this in. Right here. Yeah, that's the top of the bed. That's how they're doing it. They're just following the top of the bedrock. And that's where they are. So I can I can classify this dirt in theory. And we should start getting more pieces.
I'm sure there's layers deeper than this that will have more crystals and stuff. Absolutely, but from what I can tell you, they're not digging that deep. They're only going down. They're only going down a few feet. Ooh, there's crystals all through this. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, I got that out unbroken. Okay, we gotta go careful because obviously once you hit this layer, you start hitting it proper. Oh, my vampire stick. I suppose slow is probably going to be a better way of going. If we're gonna start finding little pieces of the bed and stuff. Little ones. Little ones, but hey, they're like better than what was out of the waste rock, like except for the amethyst. So many of the crystals coming out in this section, in this virgin undug area, are small, small, small. I got a quartz vein just here. This is host rock, and then there's a vein of smoky quartz here, and another really hard quartz vein. So I'm thinking the smoky vein runs alongside between the host rock and that hard quartz vein. So it's like every time I bust this part open, more crystals come out. Oh, look at that, like just right there. Oh, still very hard. It's like too hard for the wood, really. Heaps of little crystals. And then the pocket kind of just dries up, right? Like, you get the occasional little one, but then you gotta keep digging in. Every now and again, I'm hitting a pocket with some bigger smokies. Yeah, like that, that's a nice point. That's a very nice point. So it's there, it's there. It's just about doing the work. 99% of the time that you hunt for gold, you just don't see it until you reveal it either in your pan or pull a nugget out of your scoop with your metal detector. Crystal hunting is a very visual game. And I'm loving the fact that I can see the crystals and simply just follow them, unlike the gold. I just leveraged this rock out of the way. And I was like, oh geez, that's got some nice looking, you know, formations on it. It's almost a proper bed. Like it's got the start of crystal formations and blah, 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 blah. I was so excited about the rock, I didn't look at my hole. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, they're just all through that. Wow. <sighs> you can see them all coming out right here. There's bits of them. That's going to require some pick action, I believe. Whoa, look at the size of that piece. Again, these are broken. Something's happened to this vein, but to be able to pull this sort of stuff out of the ground like this is unbelievable. Yeah, it's all hard up against the edge of that vein right there. That's the one. And at least for now, it's given me good little bits of crystal all through it. Fire oh, out, it is hot. Very over summer, can't wait for winter. It's gonna be good. Any way I look at it, that is a great day. And that's not including the really good ones that I've got in my bag. Heaps of smoky quartz came out. Some of it was broken, but I did get some full points. Real happy about that. These make great necklace pendants. But more importantly, it's just nice to have that level of success at the start of doing crystal hunting. Anyway. That is my last double terminated smoky I'm pulling for today. I moved a lot of dirt to get that. A lot. 